Good evening everyone, you are watching On Camera and I'm with Mike Biddle, your host for tonight. We are very sorry. We've been showing you a lot of reruns and the reason is simple. We've been traveling, we've been busy, we've been on the road to Haiti so that uh, we can bring you forth uh, different and new images in the near future. Um, we have a documentary entitled on camera touring Haiti. If you're not Haitians or if you are and you don't know much about your history, well, this piece of DVD or documentary is very informative as it also shows you uh, sightseeing. Um, it depicts uh, Haiti in a way that if you knew when uh, Duvalier was in power, uh, after 1986 when uh, baby doc left the country and it has been the Haiti has been on a roller coaster where he has been going backward and uh, from 1986 to now and all the president that succeeded him well within the video you can see for yourself how uh, the country really has been on a not I, I would say not on a treadmill but no it has been actually going backward so um, now that the election is over uh, we have moved to a new phase and we have an elected president who is Michel Martelly he swore in on May 14 and which was a Saturday and on camera again was in Haiti uh, to be part of this uh, great moment now, at a time like this, who would think that uh, despite, you know, the world was watching and we had like some honored guests such as Mr. Bill Clinton, who was the president of the United States, among all the other officials like the president of the Dominican Republic who were present, uh, they were all present in the room when Michel Martelly was swearing in and for some opposition among the Haitian politics so they uh, had a blackout. Can you believe that they caught the electricity trying to, it's like a sabotage to Michel Martelly's inauguration. At a moment like that you will think that uh, after all that the country has been through, um, naming the um, earthquake on January 12 in 2010 and the uh, hurricane I mean all the hardship that the Haitian people have been enduring the people under the tent you will assume that uh, this is a moment for all Haitians to come together whether they were not for Michel Martelly or they were for whatever candidates but now that he has been elected he has been the president of Haiti the president of every Haitian whether in and outside the country and you will think like really now people who adopt the flags emblem which uh, translates to Lignon uh, Fela Force even if it's politic but I would not imagine that some people will stood to the level to the point where uh, while we have guests from all over the place yet they went that far to cut out the electricity so that they can prevent the man from swearing in as the 56th president of Haiti. If you haven't traveled to Haiti, if you are Haitians, well, if your reason is that you are scared, uh, you heard about all this kidnapping and all that, but what happened to all foreigners who are constantly traveling to Haiti, who are constantly uh, are contributing in their own way uh, with uh, monetary, uh, uh, monetary wise, they they travel to Haiti. They go spend their money. They are contributing somehow to the country's um, development. But yet you are Haitian. You saying that you love your country, that you're very patriotic. You write all over the internet and saying how much you love your country, but you refuse to travel. I mean, I travel along with on-camera crew and we've been to Haiti more than once so basically 
um, I don't see any reason why you guys cannot do the same. So go to Haiti, uh, spend money there, uh, you know, as tourists, and uh, that money will, you know, help the country uh, going forward. Um, again, we have a new administration now, right? Um, there have been an incident, for instance, in Mirabale while we were there. Uh, they set two trucks on fire and those trucks they were getting merchandise from Dominican Republic bringing to Haiti now is it really time for that kind of uh, political nonsense when we have a new administration well and basically about two three days in power what can they do um, there were some killings recently in Haiti now, is the new administration responsible for what's going on right now? Even though they just sworn in, uh, I mean, the president sworn in uh, about maybe a week ago. Now, for instance, uh, one of the senators, I believe Stephen Benoit, uh, wants to know the, um, the costs of the inauguration. Now, is uh, Michel's Martelly, Michel Martelly's uh, new administration responsible for, for the cost of the inauguration? Or is it the, the government that was in transition that organized the inauguration? Well, those are questions that, uh, you know, Mr. Steve Benoit wants to know. Now, very often we hear or we know of uh, the so-called intellectuals in Haiti flaunting about their knowledge, uh, standing before a microphone or a camera, expressing themselves in French as if by speaking French is the ultimate knowledge, as if that if one speaks French that translate into being intelligent um and we had a chance to see within throughout this campaign how that you know the people are getting tired of uh having that kind of uh statement so-called intellectual uh in power but yet they've been in power for over 25 30 years and what have they done well if you look back and look at Haiti, you'll see for yourself the result of, um, of the intellectuals at work. And Port-au-Prince is Felche, and Port-au-Prince is the capital of Haiti. If you watch the documentary on Camera Touring Haiti, you don't have to take my word, but you will see through our camera lens how uh, the inte those intellectuals, uh, they can't see past their, the hood of their car. As they are living in a country where it's filthy, and to me it shows lack of vision on their part. If you supposedly the intellectuals and you are the, uh, the government, but yet, but just because you're driving in a nice car and you have a nice house and uh, you close your eyes as if you can't see, like I said, past, you know, the hood of your car to see uh, the, the things that need to be done in a country where human beings uh, are living, the, 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 the norms, you know, the things that the basic needs that human beings need to to survive, uh, to live in such a filth and to live in such a disorganization. Well, that explains why now Michel Martelly is the president of Haiti and the people have been tired of uh, having people like uh, those guys standing before a microphone or a camera speaking French 
day in, day out, as if Haiti was uh, somewhere in Europe when it is located right in the Caribbean Sea. Well, big deal that French is your uh, official language, but the mother tongue is Creole. And so why can't you adjust the people and the language that they understand best? And basically that's what they voted you out and voted somebody who speak the language in which that they can comprehend. Um, <laughs> now, you see, that's when Haiti needs a radio station like uh, Signal FM, in English, Signal FM, which is 90.5. Uh, and those guys in Haiti, in Radio Signal FM, they are doing a great job. If, um, and I congrat the, uh, the staff, Dr. Harrison Ennis and uh, Lucien Girard, Mike, Michel Souka, Frank Exantus, and uh, Evanson Frank. Uh, this radio, indeed, is the voice of the people. This radio is educating the people on a daily basis. And I encourage every Haitian, whether you're living in or outside the country, to tune in. You have the opportunity to do so if you have uh, a computer. You can, um, you can log in to uh, sing signal fmhaiti.com and where you will be able to listen throughout the day and night the wonderful programs where for instance Michel Suka always has um, invited guests and what I'm talking about those are people that are uh, well educated people that have skills and people that know their uh, their stuff. For instance, uh, he usually has a historian or you name it. People really that are there to help the people understand uh, better the politic of uh, the politic of uh, Haiti. We come to a time where we cannot be fighting with one another where we need to actually take a look at the country and see in what state that the country is uh, the problem that the country is enduring the think of the people under the taint and the people who are out of work the people who need education so that we can have a more productive country well if you are the government and then you are oppressing the people from being educated how do you expect to have a productive country if the people are not literate so it is the problem of every Haitian it is every Haitian's concern. It is time to cleanse our mind, think differently, um, to put our knowledge into action, our skills into action, and see the country first this time, not the self-interest. The country cannot do anything by itself but it is the people that are living in the country that need to do something and we cannot only depend on the president the president is only one person even though he is the head of the state even though he is the leader but see him as the Rassembleur, like uh, uh, Michel Martelly said during his campaign. So we need to unite our effort, our skills, our spirit, 
so that we see it is time that we can no longer continue to live in such a uh, insanitary condition in this filth. Um, I believe that there is a difference between a pig and a human being. So why would we want to live like a pig in, in his pig house? Enough with the excuse of being scared of uh, traveling to Haiti. Well, we all need to go there. We all need to see for ourselves. We all need to go and so that the things are tangible in front of us so that, you know, we can not only see it but touch it and feel the people's pain and feel the country's need and, and so that we can have a better vision for our country, especially those of us who are living in a foreign country. Uh, we know how things are supposed to, uh, to be uh, running. We know how things are supposed to be organized, but yet look in what this organization that Haiti is. I mean, if we are so-called intellectuals, is speaking French enough? Is speaking French is going to fix the country's problem? Well, this is the only nation that I've seen that they just go to school so that they can learn how to speak French in order to uh, uh, talk down to their fellow uh, citizen. A lot of Haitians, that's what they do. They, sp they, they only speak French so that they can feel superior to the next fellow Haitian. But what has that done to the country? Has it served the country well? Hmm? Can you just go around and say that I speak French, that I'm very eloquent in, in French speaking, but yet as a senator, as a deputy, as a president, as a prime minister, that you are living in such condition? So just because you zoom by in your uh, uh, air conditioned car and then you go uh, you, you, you drive, you travel, you, dri you have driven through the mud to go to your house, but yet you're going to have the decency, you're going to have the character to say that, well, I am the prime minister and I'm the deputy, I'm the senator and I'm a Haitian, uh, uh, you know, member of the government. I'm, I'm educated, but yet you are living in such disorganization. I mean, some of you have traveled to the Dominican Republic. Have you have no shame to go to the Dominican Republic so that you can get care when you are sick? Well, have you thought that if you are involved in a car accident and then your million dollars that you have in a Switzerland bank account won't be able to do you any good during the time that you're bleeding on the street? Have you thought about that? Are you that intelligent to, e to even think that far to know that you need an ambulance in the country so that and you have a hospital that is uh, equipped with all the medical uh, uh, things so that if you are involved in a car accident so that you won't be bleeding to death. So the airplane that you will be requesting to fly you to Florida, you won't be able to make it because of time. Have you thought about that? Intellectual? Hmm? It's easy to express yourself in French, again, like I said, but yet you are looking at your fellow Haitians under the tent suffering. They lack medical assistance. They have no hope that they will be eating tomorrow if they will be able to feed their family. I've, I've been under the tent. I've talked to the people under the tent on behalf of on camera and through the lens of our camera. The world is able to see under what condition that those people are living. But yet you zoom by every day. You just have your head straight looking at 
the like I said, you can't see past the hood of your car, but you ignore them. So now we have a new president who is reeling, reeling, who uh, has the uh, the vision, who wants to do thing for his country. So are you going to be opposed of the things that he wants to share with his fellow uh, citizen? Is it that time now? After like 35, 30 years that you guys been leading the country in such a way, is it the time now that you're going to be opposed of change? I think if you are that intelligent, if you are the intellect that you call yourself, well, it is the time for you really to start having a vision, um, a vision for Haiti, not for your pocket. You need to think about, like, even if you're no longer in power, instead of going abroad and be spending the country's money that you've taken with you, that wouldn't you rather retire in your own country? That you think of your own children? Let posterity see that because of all the stuff that you have done for the country, that new generation, generation that come after you, can have respect for your title, for you as a person, as a leader, as a senator, as a deputy, as a mayor. I mean, I've been to Haiti on numerous times, and again, like I said, with uh, on camera, right across from the police station, right across from the palace, people under the tent, that's where they do everything that they have to do. You name it, it's filthy, it smells. Right across from the palace, right across from the police station on Place Boy or Saint Pierre. Yep. This is where you operate your, you do your, poli your policing. And uh, has it occurred to you? I mean, do you go home at nine to your wife and your children and look at them in the eyes and not think about the people under the tank? Do you do that? It's not enough to say that you love your country. It's not enough to say that I am a proud Haitian. But have you done any action? Have you done any positive action? Have you contributed to the development of the country? I have. And I'm always willing to contribute. And I say that I will give $5 a month. Don't think about just my five dollars, but see a million of my uh, of people like myself, who is who are willing to give five dollars, so that they want their country to be in the same track, just like Dominican Republic or any other developed country. Have you guys have no shame to see that you have uh, um, basically? Uh, um, occupied Dominican Republic for over 25 years. And I don't even like to use that term. They came to us for help, but yet what did we do? We did them wrong. And now they surpass, they surpass Haiti. Okay, Haiti has produced nothing, but import everything from Dominican Republic. And what happened? We used to be the first in the Caribbean. We used to be the first in tourism. We used to produce a lot of things. We used to export things to different places in the world. But now we are behind everybody else. What speaking French has done to Haiti? What speaking French has done to all those um, administrations 
that that uh, succeeded uh, Jean Claude Duvalier. Well, some of us who are not so dumb, we also know that Duvalier didn't do that much, but yet, because of your failure, you have shown him that he has done much more than you guys could ever dream of. But now, this is a new government. This is a new hope. And um, some of us know that President Michel Martelly is willing to bring the country to another direction, to bring the country to where there is light at the end of the tunnel. He loves his country. He has shown it through his organization, Fondation Rosebla, which is a pink and white foundation. He has done good deeds for the people of Haiti, unlike many administrations that succeeded the value didn't do. So now that he is willing to take the hand of everybody and lead the country into um, this uh, new direction, now, will you be standing in his way? Would you call yourself a Haitian? A Haitian who loves his country? Or would you take his hand and take the road to success with him? Because if he fails, we all fail. Haiti fails. When you think you're going to hinder his effort to do what's good for the country, you're not stopping him and you're not doing anything wrong to him, but you're doing it to Haiti. So let's be conscious. Just go home at night and then look at your family in the eyes and think of them being in the place of the people under the tent. Think of them being in the place of the people who are less fortunate, who have not the opportunity that you have because you are in a position to just take money and put in your pocket. And that money is not your money, but it is the country's money. It is all evident to all of us or the many of us. That's what the administration, one after another, that's what they've been doing. But isn't it time to really put the country first? Isn't it time to actually see that it's important to have hospital, to have roads, to have a clean uh, uh, city? port prince who supposedly to be representing the Haiti since he is the capital, it's a pig house. I'm afraid to say that, but this is the harsh reality. And I won't stop showing the good or the bad parts of the country as long as you don't give me any choice to only show the clean part because that's what you have. You have garbage, I'll show garbage. I'll show how you live. Having a nice car, a nice house doesn't mean much. It's only material. House can be uh, destroyed tomorrow, as you can, as you could see, it happened on January 12th. Nothing is more important than to value another human being, to value the life of someone, the life that God had uh, had given you. 